taking a break in my day. Um, didn't get there this morning, so you got to get it in. Uh, and I know the longer my day goes, the more exhausted I'm going to be, and I need to get a good one in. So that's what I'm about to do. In the meantime, I'm going to take this time on the way up here to initiate a conversation that I may not be able to complete in this sitting, so it may come in two parts, but I'm going to do it as one upload. Um, there's uh, a lot of media attention given to the fact that despite the fact that the Little Mermaid, uh, Disney's Little Mermaid movie uh, is doing well, it seems in the US, there are certain markets globally that it's tanking in, specifically in the Asian market, uh, ultra specifically China and Korea to this point. And a lot is being made of it. And obviously the focus is on the fact that for the first time ever the character of Ariel the mermaid is being played by a black actress uh, Halle Bailey Halle Bailey excuse me um, young uh, artist that seems to be on a path to do some things uh, in her career uh, seems to be extremely talented uh, I haven't actually seen it, um, you know, just me seeing it by myself is probably not going to happen, uh, but one of my, I'm pretty sure my youngest daughter will probably want to do it and I'll do it with her. Uh, but with that being said, uh, it's tanking in China and a lot of people are perturbed about it and the, 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 the go-to is race, 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 racism, racism, racism. It's so much bigger than racism. Uh, something that Dr. Claude Anderson used to say a lot is blacks stay playing checkers while others are playing chess. Um, the Grand Chess Board, matter of fact, one of the most enlightening books I've ever read by Bezina Brzezinski is The Grand Chess Board, explains so much about global power. But Dr. Dr. Uh, Anderson, we're talking about what was he saying in that? He was saying that we rarely understand what's going on. We rarely are up to date on the behaviors. They are playing at a level we simply are not aware of. We see discrimination. We see the superficial and surface uh, presentations of racial disparity. And the go-to is racism and we, we stop that. We never ask the question, could it be something deeper? And I've told you year in, year, year, in, year out that Racism is simply the guardian of the gate of elitism. Elitism is the power structure. Elitism is the thing, uh, is what literally governs what's in the media, everything like the, it's controlled by the wealthiest 1% of the world. And so race is just an easy uh, spectrum to recognize on site to determine who gets what, and then it goes from there. But everybody's impacted by it unless you're one of the wealthiest one percent who spend billions upon billions upon billions upon billions of dollars to fund think tanks to ensure they remain the wealthy one percent and it's played out in so many different ways now it's also played out in cultures and races i give you a prime example we're talking about asia you're talking about china china has been carrying out genetic warfare on the nation of Nigeria for at least over a decade now. I warned you guys about it when it first started. Nobody listened because they're in Nigeria. We don't care anyway, right? The hell with uh, Pan-Africanism. We got to deal with the ADS of, uh, foundational black stuff going on in America. Take care of home first. I have no problem with taking care of home first, but you got to be able to understand the way games play. And to do that, you got to be able to see it on a global level because this is a global game. Although they are isolated in, in uh, specific pockets around the world where things are done differently based on unique experiences, the, go the ultimate goal is global power. The ultimate goal is global control. And if you don't understand how everybody's vying for it, everybody's pushing for it in their own specific way. China's pushing for it. Russia's pushing for it. The U.S. pushing for it. Arab is pushing for it. Uh, even Israel is pushing for it. 
and Africa is the primary source of all of this because it's the most enriched, naturally enriched continent on the planet. So while we're looking at the Little Mermaid, we need to look a little deeper because as probably China's largest customer base outside of China, blacks, we should probably understand how they move and how they operate and what they think about us. First, I'm going to tell you about China and Nigeria. Then I'm going to tell you about a practice in China of, of things that are done, being done. First, here's this. For the past decade or so, Chinese men have been going to Nigeria and marrying Nigerian women at an alarming rate. And people said, okay, well, so what's the big deal? Well, here's the thing. In China and mostly in the Nigeria too, but definitely in China, in Chinese culture, the man is the identity identifying factor. The man is the source of identity for the offspring within the family, and that plays a role when there is a mixed uh, or biracial connection. And so then, uh, these Nigerian. The, uh, these Nigerian, most likely Nigerian born or at least born to a Nigerian woman will take on the identity of the Chinese father. The loyalty will be with the father. The loyalty will be predominantly with the Chinese culture. They will identify as Chinese the same way that the vast majority of biracial children in America that are black and any other thing predominantly identify as black. Uh, and there are different reasons for that, which is in the verse. But anyway, so what happens is, and you say, well, genetic how? They are literally creating an entire new race of Nigerians that will be loyal to China, but have influence in Nigeria and citizenship rights in Nigeria. And it's a subtle way and a very patient and calculated way of actually influencing a country that's in, on the most richest planet in the world and literally will have direct access to Africa. And eventually you will see China's influence on Nigeria directly as a government and nation. That's one thing. Okay, also a practice in China. There, There's at least a couple of guys who literally set up camp in villages in Africa and pay little kids 50 cents a week to keep them all day shooting videos. Now what they do is they shoot the videos and they tell the kids that they're doing positive reinforcement. They tell the kids that they're doing motivational videos, but they're doing it for the kids back in China and they're, and they're doing it in the Chinese native language. Uh, so more than likely Mandarin, uh, or it could be a couple of other ones, but, but regardless, they're doing it in uh, a, a Chinese dialect. And so they'll sit up and they'll say, get, they'll give the Chinese command and they'll get the kids to repeat it. But when you actually interpret it, it's saying, hi, I'm a monster. Hi, I have a low, a low IQ. And then cheer about it. Yay, I have, and I've literally watched these videos. Then these videos are edited and packaged and then sold as fodder, fun, and comedic entertainment in China. This is what they think about it. So you, then you go into, okay, where does this come from? It comes from a constant media barrage of a misrepresentation of blackness in America and blackness around the world. H hardly do you ever see the beauty in black nations. Some of the most beautiful cities in the world are in Africa. Some of the most technologically advanced and architectural uh, architect, architecturally uh, astounding cities are in Africa. They have cities that rival the most beautiful cities in America, the most beautiful cities in Australia and Europe. Uh, uh, some of the infrastructures are, you know, uh, next level. And you're never going to see those. Some of the most affluent in blacks are in countries like Ghana. And you'll never hear about it. You'll never see the communities of blacks living in 35, 45, 5,500 square feet homes and operating and working and handling business. Some of the most astute business minds in the world are in Africa. Some of the greatest hustlers and scam artists too. But that's another story. So, it, 
in essence, what you're seeing is a very strong disrespect. Now think about it, we're their customer base. We're showing up at Korean nail shops, getting our nails done. And what'll get me about my people is, especially my Christian brothers and sisters, I love you to death, will go hard in the paint about blacks talking to ancestors, but go sit right in a Korean nail shop, walk right past Buddha and the offering, and sit down in the nail shop and not say a word. Patronize them while they are literally talking about you in your face in their dialect. Go to the restaurants. Same thing. My thing is we've got to learn how to demand respect. And demanding respect comes with saying, first and foremost, the thing you value the most, I'm un most unwilling to give you until you treat me with respect, and that's money. That's the thing we give to them most freely, is our money. And then we ask ourselves, why are we handled that way? They don't respect us, they think low of us, and they've actually bought into this back black inf intellectual inferiority notion, despite the fact that we're probably actually intellectually superior. If we're gonna use the very things they use, like IQ tests, the three highest IQs in the world are three black kids. So, it's up to us to sit up and say, you know what, I'm not going to sit up and support something that isn't going to take into consideration my peace, my happiness, my respect, my life, uh, that doesn't value me, that shows me in the way they treat me, they don't value me. I am simply not going to do it. Um, got a fly that came in here. I'm trying to get it out. But anyway, I'm about to run in the gym and then I'll finish this when I come back out. Uh, because there's more to tap in on it, but I don't want to sit here and waste time that I need to be in there. So I will check back in on the other side of this. This is the end of part one. Uh, again, we've got a lot of work to do. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys take care. Rick and I'm back uh, for part two on this conversation surrounding uh, what's going on with the uh, Little Mermaid and what's happening in Asia and why we should be aware of it and what we should be doing. Uh, before I get started, uh, I want to remind you guys, if you follow me, you know that I am doing a webinar on the 30th of this month to teach people how to leverage artificial intelligence, AI, chat, GBT, open AI, and a bunch of other things uh, to expand business, grow business, promote business, create revenue, uh, uh, leverage ideas for revenue, but also create strategies to create online entities. Uh, I have the link in the description box to watch the video check it out uh there's also a link if you just want to go ahead and register because i'm going to actually uh, uh do a raffle where i'm going to draw a name from the people who register and i'm gifting one person my platinum package that's a year of working with me um so um definitely sign up plus you're going to get the seven day online business launch course a six hundred dollar course free so that's in there. i just want to put that out there because time is running out the registration ends uh this weekend so you got the rest of the day uh tomorrow and saturday and then the registration is over or when the first 50 people sign up uh so if you want to learn how to use uh ai to I mean, really, really, truly change your life. Uh, no matter where you're at, what you're doing, it's going to play a role. Uh, so I just want to put that out there real quick. 
All right, let's close out this thing on um, what's going on in Asia. Like I told you, um, China has been targeting certain parts of Africa, specifically Nigeria, uh, for more than a decade. They are literally uh, carrying out a form of, to me, what I consider to be genetic warfare. They are literally uh, sending Chinese men into Nigeria to marry Nigerian women. Uh, to create Nigerian uh, children who are Nigerian citizens but are more than likely going to be extremely loyal to China because the father in these relationships is going to be the predominant uh, source of identity and they are going to identify with their father's uh, loyalties. And these children are going to have rights within Nigeria and will at some point come of age and have influence in Nigeria. And this is a means through which they are doing this. They're playing the grand scheme. Like I told you in the first part of this, we keep playing checkers and everybody else is playing chess. Um, then you, you've got all of these different things that we sit up and we don't pay attention to. Let me tell you something. This is a world that moves and operates around money, not morality. And until we get it in our minds that we are going to have to weaponize our dollar, we're going to have to weaponize our dollar uh, in support of things that are pro-black, in support of things that empower us, in support of things that give us the knowledge we need to do, but also in withholding our money from those of us who do not act in our best interest. Uh, I said this probably 15 years ago, that blacks are the only people in history that literally finance our own demise. We pour money into their economy at an alarming rate, especially in relationship to how much of the wealth we own in this country. We are spending exorbitant amounts of money on crap, basically, and not investing in our future not investing in our children, not investing in, 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 in building businesses and building wealth and building es educational institutions that can effectively, properly socialize and educate our children. That's on us. We are losing uh, this uh, socioeconomic war on so many fronts that it's literally ridiculous. And the thing is, it's not something that we are completely out of control of. We are not acting in our best interest. We are partying. And I'm not saying don't enjoy yourself. What I'm saying is there has to be a sense of responsibility, a sense of balance, a sense of accountability to more than just having fun. We are, we are leaving the next generation in such a hole and so lost because all we want to do is show that we arrived when we really haven't. Because the um, median household wealth for, uh, for whites is 177000 for blacks 14000 uh, uh, We We haven't arrived. The wealth gap is widening. And it's widening because we don't get it. Uh, we are frustrated and getting upset because they don't respect us enough to to watch The Little Mermaid in China. And then someone will say, well, if it's a problem with it being a black person, why can't it be a white person? Because you're, the European has established by way of media that they are the epitome of class, the epitome of power. They have, even in other places like Asia, said that we are the, st we are the standard. And while uh, Asians reject it, it's easier for them to see. Plus, it's the original character. When you cast someone black who is constantly uh, uh, portrayed in media as being inferior, as being ghetto, as being violent, uh, as having a low IQ, you get the things that you get. And that's why it's actually big business for Chinese people to go to Africa and pay kids 50 cent in villages 50 cents a week to 
to gather them together every day and shoot video after video and video of, the, of them de degrading themselves in Chinese because they don't speak the language. And they are being told that they're saying things that are positive when the truth of the matter is they're degrading themselves. He's got these kids saying, I'm a monster. I'm stupid. I have a low IQ and all other types of degrading things. I sit up and I've watched this. And then they are going back and selling this for entertainment in China and making a killing. And we will constantly patronize them because it's convenient. God forbid we make sacrifices and look for other means and, and, and go through a, 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 an uncomfortable phase of building our own and, and demanding our own and uh, we are truly our worst enemy in that sense is that, again, we finance our own demise. We literally patronize the people who hate us. We patronize the people who belittle us. We patronize the people who discriminate us. We patronize the people who every chance they get mishandle us. How many times have I seen Asians beating the crap out of somebody in their store they suspect of stealing only to find out they weren't stealing? But the shop is still there. People still going. People are buying in the store while they are attacking the person. We can't be surprised that Asia isn't buying Little Black Mermaid. Um, and, 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 and they don't want anything to do with it. It's To them, it's beneath them. Um, they can't see it. Anything that puts a black person in a place of elevation royalty uh, is going to be a problem with them because they, number one, don't want us there. Number two, can't see us there. Number three, are doing everything in their power to manipulate, control, and, 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 and exploit us, and we're participating. So uh, that's it. Um, I want to thank you um, for allowing me to take your time, but I had to touch on that because everybody's talking about it. Um, we've got work to do. Again, I'm about to get off here. Don't forget, if you want to learn how to use AI, Look, go find that link and register. Also, support the work we do here at the Odyssey Project. I've got several things on my desk now. People who are caught up in binds in the system. And nobody's coming to their rescue. But they reach out here and we will take care of it. Um, as far as our resources will allow us. It's so much that goes on. That, that the average person just walks around and completely oblivious to until it lands on their doorstep and then there they are saying hey what do i do what can you do to help me and the thing is i get it but we've got to stop we got to get ourselves together we've got to come together uh we've got to do a whole lot better than we've been doing so on that note look i'm gonna get ready to get off of here uh, once again thank you for allowing me to have your time uh, if you want to support the work we do, look in the description box and the information is there. On that note, I'm out of here. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, 
uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.